Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella and, to, and today we will be talking about my best 13 books of the year. Let's get going. Coming up, we have Atalanta by Jennifer C. It's a reimagining of the Atlanta and Fierce Hunter's Face by Bears and the only woman in the world's most famous band of heroes, the Argonauts. So I really did like this book. I like how strong we were able to see Atalanta for who she really is. She wouldn't really back down after saying thanks and no to so many people. So I really like how the author had done that. And so I, it's really her better, one of her better books than Electra. Electra was kind of a mess, so I didn't really like that. There were some scenes in the moment that the author like, kind of pulled away and it didn't really made me connect to the characters that much. And so I thought the ending was so, was pretty good and suitable. I really like how the ending was. I like just finishing it off right off the bat and it's like just a really good solid ending. So I really did like the ending. So I did talk um, a lot about these so I'm just gonna you know rapid fire all my thoughts about these books just because I already have talked about it in like in the last year so yeah. So number 14 is The Hannah Artist by Alka and Josie. Escaping from an abusive marriage 70 year old Lakshmi makes their way alone to the wide by 1950s pink city of Jaipur. There she becomes the most highly requested Hannah Artist and confidant but to the wealthy woman of the upper class, but trusted with the secrets of the wealthy, she can never reveal her own. So I really did like what she, but she knew what she wanted and she went for it. She didn't back down. So I really like the strength that we had seen in this book from her. So there was actually quite a lot of characters in this book, which also kind of made me a little bit hard to follow. Like if I had like more than five characters, let's say I wouldn't be able to follow up just because it has like so many but I think this one has a pretty decent characters in the book so I really like that. So I really like how Lakshima worked hard to get where she was and how determined she was and her hard work ethic. So um, the one thing I wish was like I wish there was more henna in it just because you know the henna artist. But uh, there was just kind of little to the actual story of it. So I really wish there was more henna. Or like end of the history of it as well. So. Number 11 is House of Roots and, Rim Roots and Ribbons by Evan A. Craig. This is the second book in Sisters of the Soul. And it is about doom, love, menacing vision, and the ghost that haunts us forever. So I came to the forest and I really liked it. I like how the author had returned to the world. There's going to be a third book as well. I forget who, who is point of view we're going to following, but there will be a third book apparently. So that will be interesting. Uh, I like the spookiness. The book had I like the mysteriousness that came. I really like the atmosphere. I like the three, like, I like the twist, but I think the twist might have been too much. The cliffhanger was interesting. I really know, I, well, I think I already know who that ending was about, so that is really intriguing. And there's something I never liked, like the choices that Betty would make. There are times where she seemed selfish, and sometimes it feels like she wasn't sure if she actually loved Alex, and she just kind of went for it just because just because. <laughs> and so I didn't like the romance. I thought it was a little bit stiff and stale. Like the chemistry wasn't there at all. So I never really like it. So I also didn't really like how Vanity keeps echoing the same words all over again from other people. So some something would say hi, like let's say and and then she would say and. So like that echo effect. I don't like that in books. I wish authors would stop doing that. And so yeah, I really like, so yeah, I think the ending was suitable and I just left off this mysteriousness what the book has in, in throughout the book. So I really did like the book. Number 10 is The Hacienda by Isabel Canas. Set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence about an remote house and sinister haunting and the woman pulled into their clutches. I gave this one a 4 stars. I really like the book. I like the atmosphere and the settings. 
the plot did kind of drag just a bit, but I, I really liked the suspense that had carried throughout the books. As well as with the characters, I feel like they had their own set, like, suspense as well. And the secrets were okay. Um, and it was a little tiring as well, but regardless, I did like the crazy times of Beatrice and Andres. And I liked the ending. I thought the ending was suitable. And it was probably realistic as well. If this book could have been made into a, like a real life, um, I think that's what will most likely be in the ending. And I wish we had more of Andres, so just because his background sounded really, really interesting. So I would wish the author had kind of delved into more of his background story. But I still really like the regardless. So number 9 is Kaiki by Vashinavi Patel. So begins Kaiki's story, the only daughter of the kingdom of Kekaya. She is reading tales about the might and the benevolence of the gods, how they churn the vast ocean to obtain the nectar of immortality, how they vanquish evil and ensure the land of Bada prospers, and how they offer powerful boons to the worthy. Yet she watches as her father and seriously banishes her mother. Listen to her own worth is reduced and to the marriage alliance she can secure. And when she calls upon the gods for help, they never seem to hear. So I gave this a four since I really liked it. I like the the book was slow by the middle part, but I still loved it. I like learning about the magic, the gods, the kings and the queens. I thought the other had done a good job of teaching us about the world and that she had built. I love the scene of Kaiki and the and like the river. I really like that scene. Like so there's a scene about this river, and Kaiki was in it along with her son. So I really like that part. I thought it was you know intriguing, but I thought Kaiki was an interesting, strong character, and the familiar relationships that was well done. I never like that was. Like the relationship between her family, like her own family, her husband, their kids, I thought that was really, really well done. And it wasn't cringy, it wasn't bad, so I really liked how she did it. Sometimes I didn't really feel like the decisions that were done by the characters were just a little over dramatic. And I wish that like the harsher consequences were for certain characters, but I but again, I don't really know much about Kaiki, so maybe those harsh consequences was that it. But maybe if I read the actual stuff of Kaiki, my reading might change. So, so that could also be a fun fun vlog to do, reading the original Kaiki story. So, yeah, it's something to look forward to. Number eight is Jane Fire Gold by June C L Tan. In an empire on the brink of war, Alton is no one with no past and no family. Alton is a lost heir, his future stolen away as a child. When they meet, Alton sees an honor path to reclaiming the throne. Alton sees a way to finally unlock her past and understand her arcane magical abilities. But they may have to pay a far deadlier price than either could have imagined. I gave this one a four stars. I did I did really love this. I love Alton more than Arn just because I feel like Alton is more complex and more has more depth to him. Arn is just she's okay. Like I wish we had some more explanations about Arn. Uh, there was a lot of action, but I still feel like it, it didn't really balance out with the world building. And there wasn't that much info dumps. I hate when authors just dump everything and like, you don't need to do it that way. I promise, I promise you don't need to do it that way. So I, I did like the character development, but I didn't like how some things were happening. It just seems to be too much of a coincidental. So when I, I didn't think the ending was okay. Um, it probably had needs to have more work. I felt like the ending was a little bit rushed. You know, honestly, like considering how high stakes the book says, like one of the main characters should have died, and not honestly, like like actually died. So I don't know why the authors are so afraid to kill off the characters. So I actually kill off one of my characters, like completely. She's not coming back at all. So I don't understand that fear. I think in 2024 we should get rid of that fear. Like if you don't like it, that's, that's on you. But like, I think authors should be more brave enough to do what they want to actually do. So, I don't know. Like, they should really not be afraid, to be honest. But, 
Then seven is, I guess. Number seven is the memoir of Silver by S. A. Chakrabarti. So this is just basically a new compilation of stories from the David Bot trilogy. So before, during, and after the events of the City of Brass, the Kingdom of Copper, and the Empire of Gold. So it kind of feels really nice to how the author can go back and revisit their world. I really like when authors really really does that, so it was like a nice revisit to the world. I really did like the trilogy, except for the second one. I feel like the second one was kind of more of a filler than anything else. So I feel like, as an author myself, I feel like it's actually really tricky to write a really good sequel. So. Because it can be up and down, like Catching Fire, I loved Catching Fire, the, like I watched the movie, I haven't read the book yet, but I thought the movie was fantastic, and so writing a sequence can really, really be tough to be honest, so, but I just still like my, how the author still revisited the world after all this time, so it's a really nice nostalgia moment. But uh, I like the nice additions to the Damien Bot trilogy. I do want to still continue to reread. I actually didn't finish my reread of the first book, Setting a Blast. I have it here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I don't want to go back to actually finish rereading it. So I think I left it about like a halfway third-ish of like third of the book. So, but yeah, I like how there there is a scene. I really like Zaydabar, but there's a scene. There was something more specifically raised, I don't want to spoil it, but I thought that was like a really nice addition. And it shouldn't have been in the original trilogy just because I thought it held significance, but I can understand why it didn't work out in some scenes, but I still think it should have been included. So it, was, it really felt like a really significant importance to the stories, but um... Yeah, I do remember some of the stories, as I said, but I still didn't want to reread and go back just to have a copy collection of what actually happened, because I did forget. It's been quite a while, so yeah, so that's so fun. Number six is The Language of Thoughts by Leah Badugo. So this is like a collection of stories in the Grish verse. And so travel to your world of dark bargains, struck by Munan of haunted towers and hungry woods of talking beasts and gingerbread golems, where young mermaids' voice can summon deadly waves, deadly storms, and where a villain might do a love struck voice bidding but only for a terrible price. So I actually never read anything from Liam Bundago out of the ninth house, and that's about it. I ha actually haven't read anything from the Grishaverse, so it might have been a little bit tough for me to know what's going on in this compilation stories, but I'm not sure if you actually need to follow the Grisha verse to understand the language of Torts, but it was still a fun read regardless. I really liked the illustrations. I thought they were really, really pretty and really detailed. I really liked them a lot. And so I think my favorite one was the two Clarence Fox, but and when Water sing so, so, where water sang fire, so I like how most of the fairy tales wrote that was like not everything is like a happy ending and don't see the human riding into the sunset. So I really like how Leah wrote that. And the twists and the stories which I really like, there are some of the books that bad guys don't always get what they want or deserved, so I really like the story that were dark. But the one question I have about the witch of about the witch of Duke is the story is like when Nadia just went into the heart of the witch and just she just basically trusted the witch just like that. So I know I thought that was just a little bit weird. Like how did she not self aware about what's going on and like what's the suspicious thing like how does she not feel her instinct, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here? So, yeah, and I also knew like, relationship in the knockout between that man and Clara, like, that was just kind of, that just goes to me, so, I didn't really like that either. Number five is Heart of a Sun Warrior by Still in Ten. This is a sequel of Dawn of the Moon Goddess. And the following, Zingin tried with five once more in the tranquility of her home, but her fragile peace is threatened by the discovery of strange magic 
On the moon, a new unsettling changes in the celestial kingdom. As the emperor tightens his grip on power, when Zhengyan is determined to keep clear of the rising danger, the discovery of a shocking truth spurs her into, into a tre treacherous confrontation. Uh, I gave this a four stars. I really, really liked it. I think the book was had like a bittersweet ending to the duology of the Celestial Kingdom. There is like a 2.5, like a novella coming out soon. So I'm interested in reading that. I did like, you know, like there was some strings that were pulled and like the some certain like a character's death, which I'm not saying who it is. And so here I just really like that character a lot, so and I'm just really sad that that it happened the way how it happened. And there was some interesting twist to the book, like how the father like how someone uh came. And so I'm trying not to spoil it, but which I am happy for singing in, but I feel like it's kind of out of place almost. Like about the whole Hulu story, I also feel like Zingying had definitely grown, but I didn't like how the majority of the time she was trying to choose which boy she wants. So it was like one with the prince and her other prince, I think it was. It's been a while. Um, I did want the book to be focused more on the story and not like the like love triangle, which I hate. So I did personally feel that Wednesday should have stayed as how it should have been in the first book, but I thought the ending was still suitable and I thought it was like, you know, just really suitable for the duology of this book. I really like some of the quotes like, to live a life without love was to live life without regret. So I really like that quote, so I just thought I would include it in here. Number four is The Red Palace by Jun Ha. Jusyong, Korea, 1758. There are few options available to illegitimate daughters in the capital city, but through hard work and study, 18-year-old Hyun has a hunt, has earned a position as a palace nurse. All she wants is to keep her hand out, do a good job, and perhaps finally win her estranged father's approval. This one was a poster. I really liked the mystery behind it. I thought it was like fast-paced and adventurous and like feels a little bit like a K-drama, which I really like to watch K-dramas. I do recommend Homorang and The Painter's Lover of the Red Sky, something like that. So I really recommend those two drama if you want historical fiction. I really liked them a lot, so it was like just really fun to watch. I haven't watched a K-drama in a long time, kind of want to go back to it. So yeah, um, but I really liked the romance be between here and he Eunjin, even though it was a little flat, but I couldn't like like really see the chemistry between them until the end. Um, I also like how uh, Jun Ha captured the reality of the parents' harsh expectations. I also th thought uh, the author did a good job at Hyun's characters and how Hyun was coming to a term that she might that um, that the author did a good job at how Hyun just and came to terms with herself how her, she will never meet her father's expectations. I thought she did a really good job on that. Um, and I like how Hyun was okay with having a boy's name, which is Bae Hyun. I really like Hyun Jin, but I wish we got more of him, and not only when like a murder scene is coming along. So, but I didn't really like the story of Madame Zman. I thought it was just more, like, kind of just burst off too quickly. But regardless, I still like the mystery of the settings. And so, I really like this a lot. So, I do want to read more books from her. I, th I think she has really good potential being an author. So, yeah, I really liked her writing as well. And so, number three is A Venom Dark and Sweet by Junie Ireland. This is the number two and the final book in The Book of Tea. The number was a Venom so sweet and poison? Something like that? It's been a while. A magic steeped in poison. Oh my gosh. So, a great evil has come to the kingdom of Dakshi. The banished prince has returned to seize power. His rise to the dragon throne, aided by the mass poisonings that have kept the people bound in fear and distrust. I also really, really like this when I gave it a four stars. I like the finale of the duology. I thought it was a good ending to finish it off. I know finding was getting stronger throughout the book so that the character development. 
I still don't really like the can find a connection between Kang and Ning. It was cute, but the relationship didn't really make me fan girl and like, oh my gosh, she's so cute, you know what I mean? So that didn't really happen with the romance. I wish the final battle was more complicated with the villain. I thought it was too flat and easy, and I wasn't really satisfied with how the villain's death was handled. I wish the journey of the relics was more extended, it felt flat, and just kind of brushed off as well. So, almost too quickly while everything was wrapped up too quickly, but I still enjoyed it, especially with that snake scene. This is really cool snake scene as well. So I, th I just thought it was pretty cool. So I actually find this really weird just because I really did love this book so much that I'm surprised it's not as to what it is. But number two is The Inheritance of Awkward... Whoa, almost fell. <laughs> number two is The Inheritance of Awkward Dina Divinia by Zoradia Cordova. I know, isn't it weird? There is another one spot for another book, but I honestly thought this would be number one. But... I don't know. It's just really weird for me because I really did love this book so much. So the notorious are used to live I used to a life without explanations. They know better than to ask why the pantry never seems to run low or empty or why the matriarch won't ever leave the home in full villas. Even for graduations, weddings or baptisms. But when Ocadria and Duvinia invites them to her funeral and to collect the inheritance, they hope to learn that the secrets that she has held onto so tightly their whole lives. Instead, Ocadria is transformed, leaving them with more questions than answers. So I'm really surprised this is not number one, but I did still give them four stars. I really loved the book, I really did. We got to learn about the characters and the family history. I also liked how the story was playing. What it had eventually led up to the villain story, the mystery of the book was nicely done as well. But I also feel like at times the book was being a little overwhelming. Sometimes it was hard to keep up, like the book was, like where the story was going, and it also got more kind of like dragged out a bit, kind of breaking out the plot's flow. But I really did like the writing, I thought it was beautiful and enchanted, and honestly I find the whole book, book to be weird, but, so, maybe that's why I got attracted to it so much, just because the book ha had this sense of uniqueness in it, so I really like the weirdness of the book itself. And so, and I also thought the ending was fitting, and even though it's sad, I think it was a perfect way to end it, and like, it almost gave off the feeling that Akadia had come to terms with herself, and the way to have like a peaceful ending for herself, so I really like the ending with it as well. And number one is from Fowling Fortune by Fallen Dog. I gave it a four stars. Following an ill-matched pair of spies posing as a married couple to investigate a series of brutal murder murders in 1930s Shanghai. So this one, I really did like this one, but I think the one thing that I kept being confused about because they were just so many different sides with double and triple agents and all the different allies and alliances. It was kind of really dif difficult to keep it all straight. And it was, you know, just to really know what was going on. It's, so because this book was so long, but I, so yeah, so like the ending was a lot, like a lot. So it's really fun to be returning to this world again. And we for Rosalind and Orion, so I really do like Ari uh, Rosalind. So it was kind of fun to see this book about her. I also like the initial characters like Alyssa, I thought she was pretty cool, and Celia and Ilya and So I thought they were also pretty cool. So uh, I also feel like this book also had like the same mayor and the tone as Dean's Violet's Delight as well, but it kind of felt completely different too. I can like, I love how like the visuals were in this book, I love how the descriptions were as well. So I really did like where the storyline was taking place. Um, I still, as I said, I still like the writing style, so. And but like the new character just gave like this new energy and, was, and it was really refreshing. It was revitalized in the story. So, yeah, I'm, because I'm going back to the writing, it just really felt like so vivid and alive. It's poetic but conscious, so I did feel like the beginning was a little bit slow, but 
It was still really worth it just to see um, how everything was unfolding and how the mystery was going on in the book as well. So I really liked the atmosphere. So it was a really fun read as well. So I really, really enjoyed it. So I think also Chloe did a really good job about how talking with like the imperialism and the colonization with the Japanese invading the Man Manchuria you know, the rest intervening and still, which is still very much present, but so I really like how Chloe handled the, all those conversations that out has those topics in there, so the politics was also really interesting. I also like how Chloe went into politics as well. So I also like how Audion was being introduced at the beginning as well. I thought that was really, really cool and you just wanted to know more about him, so I also that was like a really nice touch. And so uh, one final thing, I really like the side characters with Celia, Hugh, Celia, Alicia, so they were really fun to read them up, read them as well. But yeah, and so those are my top 13 books of the year. Let me know what your top 13 is and please like, comment, subscribe. So you'll be notified every time I post and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!